Welcome to the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show. I'm your spicy host, Tara, and I'm here every episode to expose, uncover, and share what I know about SEX. This isn't what you find in your typical sex ed class. Juicy sex talk is under-discussed, and I'm doing what I can to change that. Sex is evolving. People are empowered more than ever to detach from cultural norms and design the sex life they crave. And hey, if you're looking for more after the show, I invite you to get social with me. My Instagram is the.sexed.show and I'd love for you to give me a follow. Today, I have something really personal and fun to share with you. In this episode, I'm going to dive deep into the dynamic world of non-monogamy and marriage. Joining me today is not just a guest, but my partner, James, of 10 years, with whom I recently embarked on the incredible journey of marriage. We just returned from a lifestyle hotel takeover, our first ever as a married couple and since pre-pandemic times. Woo! We'll be opening up about the adventures of our life together, the significance of our recent nuptials, and how non-monogamy plays a role in our relationship. We'll also explore the exciting concept of new relationship energy, otherwise known as NRE, and how it's influenced our dynamic as newlyweds course we'll share how we navigate our relationship and sex life through open communication regular check-ins and skillful negotiations so stay tuned for an honest heartful and enlightening conversation about love commitment and adventure in a non-monogamous marriage let's dive in before we get started this is the space in which we have come together and it's essential to show our deep respect With a profound sense of gratitude and humility, I wish to acknowledge that I live, work, and record this episode on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy and Métis Nation. I'm dedicated to nurturing a spirit of reconciliation and understanding, recognizing the enduring connection between Indigenous people and their ancestral lands. With utmost respect, I walk this path fully aware of the significance of the Indigenous knowledge and culture. And this episode, I've decided to not do a somatic inquiry, so we're going to dive right into our first topic. Welcome, James. Hola. (laughs) Hola. Where did that come from? I don't know. (laughs) But we're here now. Okay. So James has been on a few episodes here and there with me, and this is my partner and my new husband. That's still kind of weird to say. I say wife all the time and I'm like, oh, look at me go. (laughs) So we've been together 10 years. We were engaged for four and we have been navigating all levels of non-monogamy since the beginning of our relationship. Well, yeah, if you go back to our old podcast. Yes, sex uninterrupted. That's true. We shared a lot of what our journey was there and even when we weren't really doing as much non-monogamous stuff, we still were learning and growing and uncovering new things about ourselves, our relationship. Well, we, I, it's funny because so we also had uh, our first social last yes. week. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which That's is right. awesome. And I was talking to some of the folks talk, that were there. Talk about the social though, James. What's the social? Well, okay, well, okay, fine. The social is an environment where we kind of... It's a monthly event. Yeah, but it's an environment that we're trying to create where people who are in the ethical non-monogamy community or that are open sexually and that are out there that can come and meet other open, other maybe potentially non-monogamous folks or, or who knows. Or queer folks. Or queer folks or whoever, mm-hmm. but we set up the space to come at usually at one of the local bars uh, to come, kind of hang out, meet new people. We sometimes have some things on the side where you can do and have a little activity if you don't feel comfortable right away jumping into a conversation. Right. And uh, we just try to set a space that's kind of free from sex, like sex in your face, because we do know well, that... not really. I mean, okay, so essentially what we're trying to do is build... Con- community yes of course and foster connections and have an environment for people to meet each other that isn't in a traditional 
lifestyle environment where sometimes sex play is present and sometimes that makes people really nervous it's right in your face yeah. and it can be sensory overload for some people so this is kind of like a scaled back version of like let's say going to a club but it's more about meeting and connecting with people than it is about the wham bam thank you ma'am sexual activity it's more about like taking into account all the different nervous systems and bodies that might show up and hopefully being able to have a safe enough space that everybody feels welcome and feels like they can feel fulfilled when they're leaving. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people did. But as I was saying about the social itself, I was talking to some folks there and it was just, it's interesting to go down the dynamic of saying wife and saying the fact that you are my wife. And it's not like... What do you mean? Well, because it hasn't been any different. I haven't felt different since we got married. I felt the NRE for sure. uh, And like, and it's still there. But I haven't felt like our relationship has changed in any way, shape. No. I mean, we've been together so long and been through so much. And we already had, you know, quite a substantial amount of work put into creating the foundational pillars of us and our relationship so no it didn't change much there was nre though yes but what i was actually trying to get to and now i just remembered it was the people that i was talking to about the ebb and a flow of non-monogamy there is you will go through an ebb and a flow if you are in an ethical non-monogamous relationship or if you're in or you're trying to figure it out you will go through ebbs and flows. You will go through amazing times and you will go through some low times. It's just bound to happen. It can't all be sunshine and rainbows all the time. Like because, what are low times? What could that well, look like? Well, forcing you to have conversations that maybe you don't want to have or... Actually having to like look into the mirror and be like, oh, I'm really bad at saying no. Yeah. Or well, I'm really bad at hearing no. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I was saying to some of the folks there that I was just like, it's so nice when you're in the high points and but it's played such a role in our relationship that I don't think either of us I don't I don't know about you but for myself I don't know if I could not have an open relationship anymore and we've talked about this before but it's played such a role in us being able to open up and communicate and be brutally honest is what we like to say kind of takes to be in this lifestyle so when we brutally honest with each other we're able to just actually dive into some deeper yeah i get what you're you're saying i really do one thing i've noticed because we kind of did take a break during the pandemic we weren't like playing as much going to events that sort of thing and i noticed that we weren't a feeling as sexual as normal and b having less check-ins and i think for us or for me at least i think that having events that we were going to people that we might be meeting really encouraged us to talk more together and yes. check in but then there was also like a sense of like anticipation and like Ooh, who knows what's going to happen tonight or we can get flirty with somebody and flirting with somebody else and then, you know, I, I feel sexy when somebody's like, hey, you look really good tonight. Like, you look like a smoke show. And I'm like, wow, like, it's, you always are complimenting me. That's I'm used to that. <laughs> but it's it's also, like, not the same. And, you know, I notice myself feeling a little more turned on, a little more aroused, a little more horny than when we weren't in the lifestyle. And... I mean, they each have their pros and cons, but personally, like, I feel like it really just encourages us to check in, to talk more, and it's like having a hobby together, almost, is kind of what non-monogamy is for couples, or, like, lifestyle. Well, we should, we it's always... Weird. We like, always it's hard to, to explain. Say, we always used to say that it should never be something that takes away from your relationship, that only adds to it. Yeah. And it's something mm-hmm. that, you know, if you want to go and do it, it should like like i just said it should never take away from the what i like to call home in my relationship and what my relationship is at home and i always found that like we always had the strongest connection when we were actually going to these events cuz we i don't know if we i don't want to say forced but it was almost like we chose to 
make sure we had these conversations, to make sure that we were both on the same page, to make sure that we were in a comfortable space to be able to do this. And if, mm-hmm. and if like, let's say play was on the table or off the table, it was very good to be able to dive into that. And like you said, we took a break. So it, it we... We experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it's been interesting to kind of slowly kind of come back into it and start hanging out with more people and the Whistler event. Oh, yeah. And Should we talk about that? Yeah, sure. We can. Okay. Yeah. So I ended up, back in May, I went to my first lifestyle hotel takeover post-pandemic. And that was with SOP, Swinger Open Poly Lifestyle Productions. Um, and that was in Kelowna. Yes. And it was so fun. I had a really good time. I went with one of my girlfriends. You went solo. I went solo. And you can listen to that episode. And this time around, it was in Whistler. It's their winter lifestyle hotel takeover. And I wanted I wanted James to experience it. I wanted him to kind of... He'd never been to one of these hotel takeovers with this event company. And... I wanted I wanted you there. I wanted to have fun. We hadn't we haven't been to one together in so long. But that's a good point you make. Not all lifestyle takeovers or hotel takeovers or events are the same. They are no. never the same. So if you've gone to one and you didn't like it, you might want to try out another one because hosted by a different company. Yeah, because there's so many different offerings and there's so many different things that get offered at different events that are yeah that can be like really on opposite ends of the spectrum, but also can be in the same sort of, I guess, mindset or the same sort of And you can read as much as you want or can about all of them. It's really how does your body feel at that specific event. And I, you like, they're all so different. Some of them are more party atmosphere. Some of them are really long, like five days long. Some of them are like one night long. Some of them are about like really having a lot of workshops and education and offering lots of different things for people to do. They, they're they all different. They all, every single one I've been to is different. This one was, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did. We, we um, had lots of sex. <laughs> Well, and you know, you know how you always say like, don't come in with expectation and stuff. I was hoping that something sexy might have happened with somebody else. Right. And I actually noticed that little air of disappointment because it didn't. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to say, don't go in with expectations. But I mean, like you've said, you do. It's, when it's, you're putting that much money and time and investing into like going to an event, you have a fantasy or a desire in your brain, your body, and it's something you're thinking about and you want that to happen. And when you might not have that happen, it's a little bit like, oh, like it was fun, had a blast. It was a wonderful, wonderful time. But, but it's also a vacation. Yeah. You spend time planning this out. Yeah. You spend time... And I call it skin in the game. When you have so much skin in the game, because let's say you have kids or let's say you have your career or whatever it happens to be for each an individual, there are so many things that lead up to an event like this in a weekend takeover. Right. Whereas you plan, you put together all this stuff, you have the conversations with your partner, you have the conversations with yourself, you have the conversations with potentially people around you in the chat groups if you're you know feeling like you want to start getting to know people before you get to events which most event companies have a chat system that are able to chat with other members that are going but yeah I always found that like if you are going on a vacation you want to expect to have a really good vacation it's the same aspect on the other side that's literally what I just said I know (laughs) that's what I'm saying it's the vacation and the so if you plan it out and you have so much skin in the game yeah yeah I mean overall it was a great trip that was our first time going to Whistler when you're educating you also it's a different experience than if it's like you're just going there and having fun and doing whatever the fuck you want you know we had a certain sense of responsibility and duties we had to do and things we had to attend to 
and I'm there spending work money to get more work and you know meet people and network so it's it's there's another layer to it which sometimes takes some of the sexiness off but also just it was great I love SOP I highly recommend checking out their events they do a lot of like cruises and I don't think they're having a summer lifestyle hotel takeover this year in 2024 but they have the winter one they're already like booking rooms for it so i i highly suggest going and checking it out or anyone yeah yeah and so james what do you think was something that we did that was important to help us prepare for this big trip the first one in since october 2019 when we went to young swingers week in hedonism that was our last one together well i think that best thing we did was not go to the u.s and pay the exchange rate <laughs> okay no but i think i'm not talking also, about that sort of stuff no of course but i'm just saying like we connected i think we connected more because again like we chose to to make sure that we were both on the same page that we were both were feeling connected and reassured in our own relationship that we were going there maybe i don't know i, wanna, I don't want to say intentions but we were going there to you know have fun as well as educate, as well as maybe meet some new people. And notice how we felt in yeah. these environments again. How did, how did we feel? How did our bodies show up? What did we notice in our bodies the next day? And talking about that and sharing that with each other, you know, I was like, oh, I have like this little fantasy about A, B, and C, right? Like sharing that with you. Or, oh, you know, I really didn't feel good when we sat in the room for an hour on downtime but then we ended up on our phones I'm like oh that I wish that didn't happen you know and like having those real conversations with each other before and during the event too like noticing what's tracking noticing what's going on in our bodies you know one thing that's different for me too is I didn't typically at these events I I drink alcohol sometimes I used to do drugs and I didn't I had some drinks, but we weren't like... No, letting loose. No, 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 no. no. You know, we made sure we kept our head on our shoulders and, you know, some drinks here and there, but not anything to excess for sure. So I think that was something different too. Yeah, we didn't get belligerently drunk, but I, I also don't find like those spaces are super... The right environment. Yeah, it's not that. definitely not the right environment to go and get absolutely annihilated because then one year potentially slurring and you don't necessarily be able to ask the right questions and you don't remember things and it's just yeah. that's a, that's an that's not the environment to be able to go and get super trashed because you want to feel sexy you want to be able to have these nice intimate conversations right. with other people you want to be able to remember things and you know what everything happens like at what feels like such an accelerated rate like, well, like, was... like time passes so quickly and you talk to so many people and it is hard to remember. And if you are like liquored up or on drugs, that would be even more challenging to remember. I still struggle with that when I've only had like two drinks. Well, these things are busy, right? Like, they're so of, busy. They're they go so, so busy. fast. And it's on a schedule, right? So when you start out, it's like 11 o'clock there or 10 o'clock. They got something going on and like we didn't even make breakfast for both or the three days that we were there. Like, time went so fast. <laughs> because it's structured in that way to be able to... We were there for four and, days, and it, like... Pick and choose what, like, events you wanted to go to. But again, it's always on your level of how busy you want to be. Like, you can do a million things in a weekend. Because there's so many things to do. Yeah. Like, go to the pool, or do, the go, do a seminar, or... or Go to the like the whole playroom floor with these open rooms and this the room, room crawl. crawl, which is super fun. As I said, I highly recommend SOP. They have this room crawl that they do, and people set up these elaborate sort of games and fun times, and it's a lot of fun. But yeah, there's a, it can be very busy, so it's also good to have those moments where if you don't have anything planned, you can just you know take a break mm. and come back to home and reconnect and make sure you guys are on the same page and. Or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. And I, you know, one thing that we've said in 
our old podcast too is if it's you know possible with your schedule and financial considerations you know booking the shoulder so either like going a day or two early and staying a day or two after because it's like you do have a you you need that it's so busy like oh my goodness and not only that like a lot of these events thinking about naughty nolens that's in new orleans thinking about this one was in whistler the other one was in Kelowna. like i and i went to um an sse retreat in portland i really didn't get to see much of the cities or where i was because you're in the event the whole time and the only time we get to go and see it is afterwards like if we stay for a day or two after and then we can kind of like bring it back to our relationship slow things down a little bit before back to real life kind of thing yeah we did a tree tour though in whistler we did because we were there a day early yeah and i went online and was like "Ooh, what are some fun things we can do in whistler and so i found this like cool ancient tree tour that you just download onto your phone through an app and we walked it but it was it was cold it was very cold it was really cold and it was probably one of the first lifestyle sort of takeovers in a very long time that we remember actually having to bring like winter jackets and yeah because most of the stuff that we were doing before was like young swingers week in jamaica right um we we did do some in calgary in winter yeah but i mean like that's our hometown so we could bring like our big jackets with us and our boots that's in a car not getting on a plane with all this exactly oh my god it was and i was like let's just bring one carry-on and or one check bag and it ended up being two check bags and four carry-ons and because we need layers and clothes and then you have costumes on top of it like oh yeah it was it was a little interesting to fly in a lot we haven't done that in a long time where we haven't taken a trip that's been more than like a week because like you said back in 2019 we went to it was all warm Jamaica destinations and it was a week at least it was 10 days well a week in new orleans that was a yeah about a week yeah it was a week yeah because we flew in on tuesday yeah but way less left. clothes we don't need to bring our huge no. freaking poof jackets and boots because and... it's 45 degrees celsius and 100 percent humidity yeah uh, and then Jamaica, which is yeah. also very warm, and hedonism is mostly nude everywhere you go. <laughs> what else? What else do we need to talk about for this episode? What do you feel like? I I, I also like to touch on the NRE. It was I think Vegas was a lot of fun um, when we got married and kind of reconnecting and having that time. Like I, it's been the first time in four years well almost three years now that we've been away from the house for more than a week together in a space not more than a week we were only there for six days but it was so nice to be able to just kind of let loose a little bit and have some fun and still be like flirty and sexy with each other and I think that that was so nice and I got some great advice not to get too drunk and never leave your partner's side on your wedding day and I did that. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I did that. Uh I definitely was a little tipsy near the end of the night. (laughs) There are a few photos that (laughs) might not put Tara in the best. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, but it was so fun. And there was NRE. I think it was, like, something really special that we were doing. And we had been planning this for months and months and months. And we were putting a lot of money into it and... All of the people we loved and cherished were around us. And it really, like, it was hot. Like, we had some hot, sexy nights for sure together. But that was also in Whistler. We still got to kind of carry that over because that was our first trip as husband and wife. Husband and wife, right? And we had to do that by ourselves. And so I think that we've, I think we've grown into, I don't necessarily want to say a new relationship, but it's like a... a different, it's a different vibe for sure. It's I will like say an upgrade, like yeah. two point <laughs> <laughs> And I think that we're also very comfortable with each other because we've been together with for so long. So I think that we we I think 
for myself, I would love to do more check-ins because I feel like sometimes maybe mm. I'm in the I'm in a different space than where you think that I am or I think that you're in a different space that you might not be. So I think that that might be something that we should probably go back to is making yeah. sure that we cuz we used to sit down before any event or anything and like before and after hash a conversation out. Yeah, and right? we also went to a house party in North City and things got sexy that Hated. night like really hot and we had a lot of fun that evening which we didn't go in thinking that that would happen so we actually really didn't prepare ourselves for that we didn't have a check-in or anything but we have done this a few times in our lives a few (laughs) say a few so i mean we also there's it's not like we're a new couple exploring that but we we talked about it afterwards certainly and that was also really hot and i think Really, we're just approaching things in more of a way of, like, we want that, right? And if there's any of, like, oh, we're doing this for the other person, we're doing this for the couple, like, it's not about that. But we've never really been like that. I've put myself in situations like that, for sure. I can think of quite a few. Years ago? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, and that's and no, why I started to, like, notice so much anxiety around the lifestyle was I felt like I was saying yes to things that mm. were no's and yes. that I felt pressure from other people to be a certain, to be on a certain level of, like, really sexed up and say yes to anything and really horny and... I like I definitely have a lot of erotic energy. I'm a very erotic, sexual, sensual person, but I also need to be listening to my body and making sure that everything's a hell yes. And I think that with the somatic work that you're doing now, I think that there's also you understand more for yourself. Mhm. And I've understood a little bit more of myself about I'm a very open and comfortable person, but it also makes me more in tune with you when I'm in tune with myself to understand that like, oh, if I'm having an amazing, super awesome time, my partner also needs to be, in my opinion, needs to be having a super awesome time because we're together and doing that stuff and that's how we run our relationship. So I want to make sure that if there's any no's in your body that are coming out, I want to know about them so that we can make that, you know, have that conversation, have that check-in, and be able to either navigate our way out of it or find our way into it if that's what we're look- both looking to do. Mm-hmm. I think that was like a big lesson that we learned during that lull, that break of like really doing some introspective work and noticing what our bodies are telling us or at least for me and what our nose are mm-hmm. because if we don't know those nose and I I always used to say you don't know what you don't know until you try it but again like the work that you're doing now gets you more in tune with your body and how that feels and what a no feels like to say it's nice so those are some lessons learned I think I think there's a can, lot of lessons that learned. we can speak to what about maintaining intimacy I work with a lot of couples and women and I would feel I feel like this is a big topic for anyone lifestyle or not especially if you're choosing to be in a long-term partnership with another person and we've even struggled with it it's hard Our society really is about like pushing and grinding and doing the most that you can every day, but it really doesn't leave that space to nurture your relationship, your sexuality, your sexual relationship together. And it takes conscious effort. Like it really does. And I think like with phones and things like TikTok and video games like becoming more and more common it's even more challenging for couples to find that intimacy again and be on the same page when it comes to desire i believe that 100 percent, and i feel like 
the we've also kept ourselves in the last since we got married very busy and we've we've <laughs> yeah. had a lot of events and a lot of things to do which has also brought us closer because we we do mostly everything together we have done actually a few things lately that have been apart but we do mostly everything together and i like that when we do them together we're i feel like sometimes we're connected yeah like you went connected. for laser tag today without me <laughs> i did go to laser tag <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. But I didn't have to carry you on my back, so I did really well. Oh, you're so funny. Yeah, it is an interesting concept, and I feel like every couple, every partnership navigates it differently. Like, what works for one couple might not work for another couple. Like, some people swear by having a date on the calendar and that's like sex day and some people are like there is no way I could have that much pressure to have sex like I would have anxiety leading up to it I'm like hey then don't do that yeah like don't fucking do it that should Ben be comfortable it should be happy you know, it the, should be... the key is really having that fostering that intimacy not just on nights when you want to have sex, like during all of the times in your relationship. Taking that time. And also becoming reacquainted with pleasure in your own body, like actually having masturbation sessions, solo sex sessions with yourself. Touch yourself. And knowing what it feels like to feel good in your body. Uh, it's so underrated. And not putting the pressure on 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 demand intimacy. So for an example, like if your if your partner asks for a massage or to rub their feet or something, don't pressure that into having to change to be sex, to end in sex, right? That's just an intimate no. moment that you're sharing. And the sharing. request is not let's Rub, rub my feet so we can have sex. Right. Right. The request is, can you please just rub my feet? Yeah. And, you know, being in those tender moments of intimacy and really uh, reframing that intimacy isn't just intercourse. Well, and then also, like, set and setting is always a big thing. Making, yeah. like, finding out, you know, if they're a very sensual person and maybe some nice mood lighting and some sense. You know, if they're... Not having the football game on in the background. Not when you're having sex. Or when you're... Not when you're trying to increase intimacy. Oh, encourage intimacy, intimacy, yes. Unless you both like football. (laughs) Who knows? Touchdown. (laughs) But yeah, nurture those spaces and have those spaces to be able to come together as a couple or as an individual... And setting that time aside so that you do connect and you become a stronger, closer, you know, more communicative. You're on the same page all the time. You have these moments where you just, you know, kind of nurture those moments. Mm -hmm. And I think that also, like, not set them up as in, like, set up a date for sex, but also set them up as in, like, if you have to plan it out, plan it out, right? Like, if you have such a busy schedule with kids and work and family Family. and all this other stuff that's going on in your life prioritizing your partner and your relationship is also also setting that time aside to make sure that you guys have the time and the space to be able to openly express yourselves and feel free to be able to communicate and and have that sexy moments that may not lead to sex but just have those intimacy moments and it shouldn't just be one partner doing it True. It shouldn't be just one partner who's like, oh, I like, like, let's set up date night instead of the, we've talked about this before for on the date night episode. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's both of you and both of you have to make that effort because if one person is doing all of the work or most of the work, they feel that. And... Both people need to, not equally, I'm not saying it needs to be 50-50 by any stretch of the imagination. Figure out what works for your relationship. Exactly. But, I mean, there's two people present, and I think it's important that you're both doing what the other person needs. Meeting their needs. 
meeting have those conversations and figure that out so james future plans future of adventures i know that we want to keep doing the social because it was such a hit so if you're in the calgary area if you're in calgary and area so-called calgary please come and reach out to me email my facebook anywhere and let me know so that you can be invited to our next social yeah we've added we've added our facebook group back Uh, we are still posting on some of the local websites as well and yeah we're really passionate about building the community in calgary again and we have some really great people in the community who also are passionate about it and want to help so it's nice to have that support and our next event is january 11th so you can go to my website sexedforthemodernbed.com and you can register for that the one in february is february 8th it's a big big event it's not just for lifestyle it's for the queer sex positive non-monogamous anybody kind of thing who wants to learn more about sex there's speakers there's workshops there's entertainment there's dancing and that's february 8th at hotel arts so both those events are listed on my website and we're also going to phoenix uh, which is it is more of a family trip but hopefully we can carve out some personal time between the two of us to be able to go and be intimate and be able to share some experiences together we also are going to be oh and we planned uh, another trip to yes yeah so we have we have a few trips but those are like mostly going to be family vanilla but when it talks yeah when, when we talk about like if we're talking about non-monogamous stuff mostly yeah. the socials yeah probably some party nights new yeah. year's is coming up which is also like a lifestyle holiday <laughs> so We'll see what the future holds. I mean, we try not to put too much pressure on ourselves of like trying to do everything all at once and feeling overwhelmed with the busyness that that might bring. But really for us, I think a priority right now is just building that community up in Calgary and guiding people through some of their journey because we've touched so many lives and so cute and rewarding and beautiful to hear about people in the lifestyle who are just loving their relationship and the dynamics they've set up and you know it's because they reached out to us and met us for coffee one day and we kind of you know told them some things and like sent them on their way and now they're like five six years down the road and just loving it so you know that's i love that anything else i don't think so okay well we had one audience question from my ig questions and this one i I thought was a great question actually why get married if you are consensually non-monogamous what is the point do you want me to go or do you want to go no i can i can speak to my point okay i think that that we were going to get married eventually at some point anyways i feel like that was our natural progression and that's what we both kind of wanted purposes we've been filing our taxes forever we've been (laughs) we've been common law married for a very long time so it's not necessarily that i think it was one in the beginning of our relationship i do remember in the non-monogamous side of things that we weren't necessarily taken super seriously because we were just in a relationship and we weren't in a marriage. Yeah, we were more of like a situationship. Yeah, and so a lot of people might not have approached us or developed a connection with us because of our relationship status. Slash didn't trust us. Yeah, so now that we're married, hopefully they trust us now. No, but (laughs) we're also, we were... Just our natural progression. That's where we always wanted to go. We always wanted to get married. We were supposed to get married in July of 2020, and it, COVID kicked that in the teeth. And unfortunately, and for for me, I feel like you're just my person, and there's no other person I could ever envision being with, and being as comfortable and myself around as you. We've seen each other in our highest and we've seen each other in our lowest. Yeah, and you always show up and support and respect me. And (laughs) 
Are you going to cry? I'm going to cry. But I really, like, there's no desire to be with anybody else to this level. And And we tried that. And it's not like we went and got married a traditional way either. Like, we got married a really fun, exciting way in Las Vegas with Elvis. And we really threw all of those traditions out the door and just did what we wanted to do. And it was so much fun. And just bringing all of the people we loved together and being able to party with them for like four or five days, that was amazing and something that will live in my brain until the day I die. And hopefully those memories will just, you know, still survive in like Stardust somewhere. Well, we have lots of photos. But yeah, I think that that memory of our wedding, and I've been to a lot of weddings. I've been MC of a lot of weddings. I never have had so I never had so much fun at any wedding in my entire life. And now we have an anniversary which we never really had because we didn't adopt. That's why we got married. Yeah. So we can actually have an anniversary. So we can be like, "Oh, okay, you know, October 3rd every year we can like do something really fun, exciting, go on a trip, do something sexy, who knows what, you know, the world's our oyster." But I mean, it's it's some intentionality too of like okay next year on our anniversary like we're gonna do something fun and celebrate it and relive what happened a year ago and the magic of that week and las vegas baby yeah (laughs) so anything else you want to add before we wrap up here james no i'm good i'm on instagram at seven james (laughs) one 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 if you want to reach out (laughs) <laughs> it's a uh, riveting it's a riveting instagram page oh my gosh you should really check out the four photos that i have up there you have it's... photos now oh there's always been four, four. <laughs> from like what five years ago one's a set of nachos from our favorite nachos place oh my god one is setting up a massage night oh in the main I'm room i'm looking this up right now uh the other one is i me in the sunlight <laughs> and the other one is um, oh fuck I can't remember what the oh, last one is oh there's one of us and desire oh yay yeah there is and then breakfast oh there's a video oh breakfast yeah it's I think m- this was in Denver oh there's five James ooh I'm on my way be an Instagram superstar model no You have 294 followers. Hell yeah, I do. You want to be the next one? You're hilarious. Anyways, (laughs) unless there's anything else, do you have any more plugs? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, come to our social on January 11th from YYC if you're in town. So thank you, all of our, all of my amazing listeners. Our? For tuning in to the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show. If you're looking for more ways to connect and access info, please get social with me. You can follow the show's Instagram at the.sexed.show or my individual, it says me individual, or me individual Instagram at sexed for the modern bed. Until next time, claim your pleasure, own your body, and stay in presence. presence.